There we go. Hello, Brian. I hope you're doing good. Um, we were just having a, a small chat before we started recording, um, uh, going over a few of the topics that, that we, we could cover today. Um, you're a person with which, from your videos, I see you have many interests and, um, and, and you have a very nice way of, of, of putting them forth and, and sharing it with, uh, with people. Um, which is something that's reflected in, in, in particular, as I was saying just a moment ago, in, in the community that's come, out, uh, come up around the, the, the videos and, and the channel you have on, in YouTube. Um, and I know that, that you put out a book. Um, maybe we could start over there. Uh, you could tell us a bit about it and how you got to, to the point that you decided and and manifested that that book well rafa i'm honored to be on thank you for inviting me and yes uh my book is the reality revolution the mind-blowing movement to hack your reality and i kind of tell my story and try to document what i think where i traveled to a parallel reality and i study the science behind it and we go over techniques and ways to actually quantum jump into different realities uh, and i try to make the case that we are creating our reality uh, and we're moving into parallel realities. Uh, so that's what the book's focus was on, is trying to share some of the techniques that I came up with in my journey in trying to understand what had happened to me, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I haven't read it myself, but from the, from the content that you put out, I, I feel um, a very, um, what you call it, um, kindred spirits maybe, or, or that we, we share, uh, uh, an outview on life and and the possibilities of of the human of the human being and and how much there is that we don't know about the limits of our of our potential absolutely it's uh, it's it's amazing I, I i meet people every day um there's a lot of kindred spirits the message speaks to a lot of people a lot of people are on on a similar journey right now i think we're all kind of awakening to uh, a different world than we imagined, and it's exciting. It's fun. So the basic premise that that uh, that your your stuff um, is exploring, I would I would put it perhaps you you would put it in other words. Um, I would say that you're exploring the the idea of manifestation and the creation of our own reality. Um, some author. Uh, ex um, expresses it as selecting realities so mm -hmm. like uh, the possibilities are already in front of us and in a certain way we can we can yes. we can choose one and and bring it forth or in a certain way like you also mentioned jumping timelines and jumping to right. uh, places i mean this is very interesting because it, even though it sounds crazy for some people Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's not a, an idea that goes against what uh, what we know. It's just like a different way to look at at what we already know. Right. Yes. Uh, when we talk about manifestation, which is the idea that we are creating a reality through our thoughts alone and, and manifesting it, um, kind of that's what I'm exploring. Uh, in the past, we might have thought, "Oh, I attracted this thing to me." This thing came to me because I thought about it. And I try to, in the book, explore the science, the physics of reality, the way the observer affects reality and the way we collapse waves to particles. So the implications are, is that we're, uh, that there may be an infinite number of parallel realities that are running along where there's a version of you that was a rock and roll star. There's a version of you that, uh, there's all these multiple versions of you and we're not enclosed in this, we can, we, can, uh, we can sense these other realities. And when we uh, move into a reality where something happens, it's not that we attracted it, we just chose that reality, like you said. Uh, so there may, these infinite number of realities are already created, as Neville Goddard explains. And we're simply, or even Vadim Zeeland explains in the space of variation, we're simply choosing a script or a movie role or a, a timeline. Um, and that's what I'm trying to explore this. There's that question I always ask is how is this working? 
And so my, my first part of my book is I don't understand. I don't believe it. Reality doesn't, I need to understand. So I try to go through the mechanics of it. So we may be attracting things, but we're also choosing a parallel realities. And how would you say that this is working? What, what do you think is, is the, the, the process that, that brings this into, or, or what is the, the, the truth about reality that allows for this? If we go to a quantum scale and we look at a, a light particle, which is we're made up of light particles. Uh, and when we don't observe it, but we watch the effects of the light, if we shoot a light particle through a double slit and we, and we don't observe it, then it fans out into multiple possibilities of all the places that light particle could go. But when we put a camera on it and observe the light particle, it has a single destination, which means that light particle knows it's being observed. And it's collapsing to that one possibility when we observe it. So physicists will tell you, some big old physicists will tell you, oh, that's just on the subatomic scale. But I'm making the argument this is happening on the macro scale, that we are collapsing realities on a macro scale rather than just the subatomic scale. Uh, and through quantum coherence and things like that, what we're happening through our attention and awareness, we're constantly creating our reality, which is being created through beliefs, and that's collapsing the reality. At the same time, that light particle also carried the information of infinite possibilities within it. And so there's also the possibility that the light particle went one direction or another. It chooses one path when we observe it. So all of those other destinations by the light particle and by us are still available to us in an information space. And as we begin to focus on something, What happens is we open up that timeline, that universe where that thing exists in our experience. And we naturally slide towards, we collapse the timeline into a reality and we start to see it happening, which is what is the, my best way of explaining, if that makes sense. What do you think here? Yeah, I was yeah. just muted. I think, um, no, I was saying it, it makes sense to me. Um, yeah. It's it's of course stuff that that to to be to be accepted. It, it shouldn't be just accepted uh, from from hearing it somewhere or hearing somebody right. else say it. It should be put in practice and almost in a scientific way uh, verified by by one. Uh, it's very difficult to 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 prove scientifically. Mm. A lot of this stuff is almost impossible. Um, because you're you're having to in a you can't in a science lab say, okay, that thought was sent. And now we're gonna see the effect of the thought. So it's very difficult to you can somebody can write down, well, I just thought that, but it, it's all so internal within your own consciousness that ultimately with a lot of this stuff, we'll never be able to truly scientifically prove it. But we can understand the architecture, the the mechanics of it, so that we understand how it's working. But we, they won't be able to go into a lab and say, okay, we see the thought and then we see, you know, maybe anything's possible. I would love, that would be so exciting if they figure out how to identify the thought and see it begin to create a reality because that would be a big wake up call for everybody. I mean, imagine the world when they actually realized that it was true, mm -hmm. that the whole world that they're living in is all just a result of beliefs and, and ideas and thoughts they had in their own mind. So. Yeah, it's extremely subjective, even because of of the fact that when the the reality that you were uh, expecting comes about, mm -hmm. it, it 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 doesn't necessarily come about uh, in in the way you expected. In a way, This you know what I mean? Like What's the, happening? The, it's it's uh it's an energy you're identifying the energy of that timeline that has those things um and then the, usually what's happening there's a bridge of incidents that takes us from where we're at to that thing uh the mechanics of of reality it's almost like you have a higher self that wants doesn't wants to keep you sane so if you imagine an elephant and it suddenly appeared in your in your room you might go a little insane You might be, you know, it, it, so there's a portion of you that wants you to realize your power. And it feels like to me, as I, as I've gone through this, that we're, it's like we're, we've been put in the Lamborghini, 
right? We, we've just been given the keys, but we're just learning how to drive. And there's some, there's some kind of over, I think it's our own higher selves protective force that, that has a delay and creates a bridge of incidents to make it seem tenable to our rational conscious mind when the reality occurs. A lot of times we can, oh, it was because of this or this. Um, the, I, it almost seems like the, that they do their, the, the mirror, which is being reflected when we see this thing, doesn't want us to know it's, it's there. It wants to do the things to create and reflect the world that we are shaping, but it, it tries very hard to make it look like it's natural and normal. Um, and slowly people are starting to say, oh, I caught you there. It's, that's not exactly how it works. I know this time, uh, but the universe is working incredibly hard to make it seem natural and normal so that there is this law of confusion, this doubt that we have. It's a natural thing. Um, and that's an amazing part of it. Absolutely. 100%. What I do think is happening is it's, it, there's a quickening happening now that we're starting to see. Wouldn't be surprised that people start having elephants show up in there <laughs> eventually, but it, it seems like uh, there's a quickening happening and things are happening faster. So mm. what do you think that could be? Is it part of I have, you know, if you if you read the law of one, which is some of the things I discuss on the channel, uh, the law of one is a channeled work from a multidimensional, advanced multidimensional entity. I have, have multiple videos explaining it, but the information kind of describes reality as we are, and it's from an advanced race from three billion years ago that started out on Venus. I know that sounds crazy, but the information that's coming in, you can evaluate for yourself. They're explaining that in our realities are levels of density of light. So, and levels of consciousness. So you begin with the, with the bacteria and the germ moving up to the insect, to the animal. These are all levels of consciousness and they are, they, they're parts of densities. Uh, a density is how much light is in a reality. And we're in a third density environment, in a third density consciousness, on the cusp of fourth density. Fourth density is just more light, and it will result in changes in how we think. It, it, according to other channel works, even biblical references, it seems as if that we have like a 75,000 year cycle. And as this cycle comes to an end, there's a quickening and they talk about the harvest uh, and some people end up moving to a higher level of consciousness, incarnating in higher levels of consciousness. And I think that that's by design, that we're learning about the powers of our mind and how we deal with it is how we move up in these levels of consciousness, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, this stuff can get um, very, very... Very woo-woo. It can, it can give woo-woo, and I'm sure that we had a few people turn off right there. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, um, but I'm telling you, um, even with, if what I say is not true, it, it, it feels like that. I'm, I'm using that as a reference to help me mm -hmm. to explain what's going on. But there certainly could be a lot more to it. I'm still a student. I'm still an observer, and I'm getting and gathering information from wherever I can to help understand it. Mm -hmm. No, it, it can sound woo-woo, but it can also sound woo-woo. So it's just the, the perspective <laughs> one you to take. Because uh, sometimes we get confused. This is some, some, something I've, I've thought a lot. We, we tend to confuse the message with the messenger. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if, if, if they say they are a, 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 an entity or a race of beings right. from Venus, some it people... sounds so crazy, we, people are going to say completely insane right yeah uh, you're gonna have all the spectrum because some people will be oh yes that's completely true i absolutely believe right. it i don't know how they would just automatically believe it then others will say it's completely crazy and they will uh, dismiss the message right which, which if you were able because it, yeah perhaps connected to the idea of this uh this transition this seventy-five thousand year um right uh transition let's call it um, some people will be more ready than others. And so those people that could probably be more ready to receive that message will be able to discern and be, okay, the, the, the origin of this message, who knows how true it could be. Right. But how, how much does the, re the, the message resonate with my own intuition? Exactly, yeah.
So um, it's interesting to ponder and consider, uh, but the information that's in the Law of One is reflected in other works. And the interesting thing about it, when you read it, it's, it's a woman that's chanting that's completely out and the language in it, there's, it's just not her. You can just tell she never talked like this. So it's a very unique channeling and uh, the best people can do is judge it for themselves. Um, but I do think that's an explanation of why we're, why our realities are changing. And they even explain that in there. Uh, we've been talking about the Mayan prophecy, uh, 2012, we've been, you know, and, and so there's definitely been other uh, groups that have been talking about something happening, a shift to a new earth uh, from multiple different sources, the Dolores Cannon material, where she is in, in hip, hypnotizing subjects that are um, and accessing their pre-life experience. And they're explaining that a lot of people have come to this earth to experience this big event or transition. The, mo the number of coincidences with all the material talking about the same thing is interesting to note and certainly important to consider. Yeah, and um, one, of the, one of the tools perhaps that can be used to assist us in, in producing uh, this, this or selecting this new reality and, and being able to, to be part of, of those who will uh, understand and integrate this, this new possibility is mm -hmm. um, learning to unlock the power of the subconscious mind which is something that uh, uh, you explore a lot in your videos, right? Yeah, I, I really love those old works from those old New Thought authors. It felt like they were starting to touch on stuff we're, we're touching on now, uh, which tells the universality of the human experience. But clearly the subconscious mind is like the ocean uh, and we're just the iceberg popping out. There's so much the subconscious has access to infinite possible infinite information and is really the bigger more powerful more uh knowing part of us and dr joseph murphy's work really talked about how to unlock the conscious subconscious mind there are uh, additional works by elizabeth town and christian larson and neville goddard that really explore once you break down so your reality is being created but you start to learn as you explore this that a lot of the reality that's being created is subconscious. We don't tell our heart when to beat. And so there's some part of us that's magically creating our reality subconsciously. And a lot of times that's through our environment and messages that we're getting on the media. We get into a feedback loop where the TV tells us what our reality is and then we create our reality and the TV or the, the internet tells us what our reality is and then we, then we create our reality. And it's all our subconscious. For me personally, when I was really struggling, and it's like, well, if I can create my reality, why isn't anything happening? Or it just doesn't seem like it's working. And I had deep, deep subconscious beliefs that I had to break. And how do you break a belief? You believe something, how do you change it? Very hard. Uh, we have beliefs that go back to our childhood, and they're so deeply ingrained. So... I do explore a lot of different things. Sleep meditation seemed to be the most powerful way to break into the vault of your subconscious and make a difference. There's certainly lots of ways to do it. But when I have done it and I've started to see changes in my reality, it has been, in my own case, linked to working on breaking down the subconscious through, through affirmations and through sleep meditations and through hypnosis uh, and just making it my intention that that is not what I want my subconscious to be doing. It's on a program creating this reality and I want it to do a different program. And so that is, that's why I introduced that on the podcast because yes, we're creating a reality, but a lot of it's being created in, behind the scenes. And so I want to get to that part and say, stop, stop what you're doing. And we need to go back and do this differently um, because your subconscious may be God. We, uh, Neville Goddard says God is inside of you asleep. Uh, and some people will say that your subconscious is your higher self, but it is, it does seem to be a powerful being that is inside of you that has the knowledge of the universe. When you walk into a room of a hundred people, which is not common right now, but eventually someday, a hundred people and they're um, all having different conversations. Well, you might hear one thing that's nearby, but your subconscious 
it hears all the conversations and logs it and records it. So it knows that Joey down there is starting a business. So, and it knows, and so it, when you're driving on it, it, all the little details are constantly in flow. And the subconscious is this massive quantum computer. Um, so first of all, breaking the subconscious will help you change your reality. Uh, but more importantly, figuring out how to control the subconscious, the subconscious does all this behind the scenes. And it's, it's really, uh, it's an eye opening experience when you see it. Um, that's at least been my experience. That's why I really talk about it a lot on the channel. Yeah, the subconscious mind. I mean, if we think about the, the very name of it, uh, the fact that it's uh, the, the part of the mind that is not the conscious. Yeah. I mean, it, it opens the door to the possibility of how big is it? What, how big is it? What, I mean, yeah. it's like everything that's in the unconscious is whatever the conscious is not. So, yeah, right. whatever anybody else is thinking anywhere in the universe could could potentially be part of our unconscious so there there's there's i think there's three there's the conscious mind the subconscious in the body mm. and then the super conscious and it appears at least during sleep that the subconscious and the heart are in communication with the super conscious this bigger mind uh and so that's why maybe the subconscious and the super conscious are the same thing uh but for pr our own purposes um, I do think there's a link between the two. So yeah, absolutely. Mm. And, and um, what, what could you, could you say uh, is a, a good technique that we could share with, with everybody um, on how to, to break those, those unconscious beliefs? Because they, they, they are, like, like you said, they are programs which are uh, telling us or, or guiding our decisions, mm -hmm. uh, even if they are not useful for us today, they were useful perhaps at the time they were um, they were created in our minds, or perhaps right. not even there. But they are there because, in a certain way, they do uh, accomplish a certain fu function in in our daily lives. Right? If, yeah. If you look at all of your beliefs and your subconscious, the way that your life's going. And the, the repetition built in by her, your habitual patterns, you're constantly telling your subconscious when you wake up, when you eat breakfast, when you go to dinner, when you read a book, it's constant. So the only way to change the subconscious for me is, is some sort of repetition or constant thing to break that other repetition or constant habit. Uh, and so what I have found is I will listen to affirmations. Now it's really important. Some people, when they listen to affirmations, it can go the complete opposite way. Some people have a habit of thinking of the opposite. When it says, I am wealthy, they have a habit of thinking of being poor. So it's uh, knowing how to do an affirmation for the subconscious is also important. It's not just about saying the words, it's about feeling it and experiencing it. In my own case, I like to th make it treat it like it's a memory. Like I'm treating like I'm saying I'm wealthy. I'm remembering that I am wealthy, that I've already become wealthy, that I am wealthy now. So uh, I, I will, a lot of times when I first started, I'll, I'll have up, I'll, I'll, cr I'll start creating a set of affirmations that are really powerful, that touch me, that when I say them, that they, they really resonate. And a lot of times that's a personal thing. And then I will, when I'm working out, instead of listening to workout music, I might run those affirmations even super fast. I might put together an hour and then put that on bad boy on three times speed. And then I'll listen to myself or some other affirmations while I'm working out. It just kind of seeps in. Hey, I might not have even noticed it. I, I like to also do binaural affirmations. It's this hypnotic technique where one word is being said in one ear and the other is in a different ear. So using the right and left brain and communicating to both separately also seems to break the subconscious. But I also really like sleep meditations, which is not for everybody. Uh, I use a sleep mask and while I'm sleeping, I'll have a certain meditation or group of aff affirmations repeated over an eight hour period of time. And when you wake up, it's just like pummeling your subconscious like over and over. I don't care what you say. This is the truth. This is the truth. And eventually the subconscious breaks down. Okay, okay, I'll believe that. 
Uh, and that's a lot of times some people's subconscious is so built up. Eight hours is just nothing because they have logged in thousands of hours of the opposite belief in their consciousness. So the, some people can do a breakthrough and they can really tap into their subconscious. When you read the book, Feeling is the Secret by no, no, Neville Goddard, it is one, also one of the best in discussing how to break into the subconscious. The subconscious in many ways is like our lover. Uh, and, and it doesn't want to hear a long story and the words sometimes don't matter, but it's the feeling. Uh, the feeling, if, if it feels this, it, it wants to recreate those feelings. So it's important when you're doing it to also try to constantly bring up the feelings of those affirmations. That's the best ways I've found, but there are multiple continual ways and I'll always be exploring them, but I think it is important and seriously the key to major changes. And I've seen it in other people's lives too. And let's go really, really basic. You're mentioning how important it is to feel the feeling of the wish fulfilled as if it just, uh -huh. uh, has already happened and as if you're living that life. Right. How would somebody uh, who's maybe listening and thinking, how can I feel the feeling of something I perhaps don't yeah. know or I haven't experienced before? That's a great question. And what does it mean when I say feeling? And it can mean a lot more. It can mean a feeling in your body, but it can also mean a state that you're entering into that adds in a whole lot of other flavors. Uh, so what's happening when you're feeling a feeling is you're, send, you're broadcasting a signal out and you want more that that more and you will always get more of that feeling so you i i like to ask myself the question what would it feel like if uh and you get better and better at it also when you have really big elated exciting feelings that you like that are similar when you're in those moments of uh, when you climb the top of the mountain or something's really uh, you're having that wonderful day you can link it to other things and, and imagine you're doing something and having that feeling. When you have a feeling that you like, which you will, you wanna remember it, you wanna log it in, you wanna to, to start to really analyze the feelings in your body and your state and your mind, your thoughts. Um, it's an ongoing process. That's why when people say, well, hey, if I can create my reality, why don't I have a billion dollars? Well, the truth is being a billionaire is a very unique state that very few people understand. There's a whole bunch with it. You have advisors and time that you work and all these things. People think, oh, I can just imagine being a billionaire. No, you can't. If you read like thousands of pages of different biographies by billionaires, you'll just start to get the feeling of a billionaire. But even then, so that's the biggest reason why a lot of people aren't able to feel Uh, because they haven't done the work. And so I, I will read biographies. I will constantly contemplate it. I'll create a playground in my mind. Uh, and so more and more, you'll start to refine and get better at creating those feelings. Uh, you know, so uh, it, it is tough. And that's the hardest thing of it is how to create a feeling. And that's why a lot of people can't manifest things because they can't imagine the feeling. Uh, so becoming an, an actor and really using your imagination to really flesh out the tones of it, then you can start to differentiate these feelings. And it's part of the process, for sure. Yeah, and I think we've been conditioned, perhaps in our subconscious minds, to, to believe that our feelings uh, are created by something else or, or, or an exterior circumstance, mm -hmm. right? That they, that they yes. you know what I mean? Like we're uh, reacting, right? They're, they're, we're reacting. So, um, but the interesting thing is, uh, another great book by Neville Goddard is Prayer, the Art of Believing. He talks about a law uh, of reality, which makes it so that the effect can be the cause. The, um, by feeling in a certain state, you start to create states where that feeling is, is caused. So it is hard that inverse idea that the, you're not just reacting and then the feelings coming up. It is because that's how we are. And that's why it's harder. How do we generate a feeling in our body? Uh, and, and, and that it's like playing a piano and it takes time and meditation and work, but it, it, it can be done. And you got to jump and, and realize I can feel good right now, even if my environment around me tells me I shouldn't. 
And if you do that for a regular period, you will start to see down the road uh, events come up into your experience that reflect that feeling and you'll feel it again. It's the weirdest thing. Uh, that's the best way I can explain it, yeah. I was thinking that also uh, learning to connect and not, not really learning, but um, practicing really, like you were saying, to connect with the, with the feeling of gratitude. I think yes. it's, it's so important because that is kind of an entry way into all of yes. this. And that's, everybody that's the, can, sorry, absolutely. Everybody if you can. You don't know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. The ultimate signature of getting your wish fulfilled is a deep gratitude. And you go to times in your life when you've been deeply grateful, it's, it's kind of a signature of, I've already got what I want. I'm so excited and happy. Thank you, God. Uh, it, that feeling of gratitude is the easy fallback. If you don't know how to generate a feeling, then by, by being grateful, why is being grateful so powerful? Why do all these self-help speakers say that you need to be grateful? Uh, and why is it in the secret where they carry around the rocks to, as, a, as a reminder of gratitude? Why does that work? Well, it's because in that state of gratitude, you're broadcasting out that feeling that the wish is fulfilled. So you're going to start to see experiences where you have this gratitude for. So I always try to use that as my fallback. When I don't know how to generate a feeling, then gratitude's the easiest way to do that. Mm, and you make me think that in a way it's like, mm, like kind of uh, creating uh, the, the, the feeling of how would it feel if I, yeah. uh, if the wish was fulfilled mm -hmm. in a certain way, it's like, um, th there's probably some, some research about uh, the, the neural activity and the pathways yeah. in the brain that you're um, uh, perhaps synthetically creating the feeling, which then... The brain doesn't know the difference. If you do it right, deep down, it does not know whether or not it's really experiencing it now or this is a memory. So when you continue to do this, the structures of your subconscious are trying to constantly create this reality for you. And it's like, well, that, that must be the reality because uh, it's a grateful feeling. Um, so it's a circumvention of that feedback loop where we're constantly being a reality that's created by our reactions. So yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, we're teaching, teaching the mind to, to focus on, on certain um certain energy patterns perhaps in in reality so uh, when you go when two pe different people go into a room or or do an activity one will say oh that was great whereas the other one will go eh, whatever i didn't care much about it so uh it's it's definitely um the, the exterior world and how we perceive it in the end it depends on our own attitude towards it right absolutely i agree with you 100 mm percent -hmm. well um there's there's so much that you that you explore in 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 your work um and really thank you for everything you've been sharing so far uh i see how passionate you are about all of this and uh, and and truly you you show that 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 you've got lots of lots of um uh i i was telling you before we started um your videos show lots of research because i mean it's a great idea that you you're for example reading some of the books or some of the chapters of the books over mm -hmm. there uh which which gives a kind of in a way theoretical background or or the yes the the vision that another mm -hmm. author might have of of the subject and how they explain it and 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 yeah one of the main things i wanted to say is that I, i'm loving uh listening to to the videos uh especially the ones at night um i've got some of those uh for eight yeah. hours <laughs> it sometimes can be hard to to have both ear, earbuds on but right. but uh, well, I, I use I, a sleep mask um you can listen to it just on a speaker but some people have partners and their wives or husbands don't really like hearing that blaring so I've used a sleep mask. You can get one on Amazon. It has flats. It has flat. So the sound is not super great, but it's like a, it's a mask and, and you can get the binaural and it's, ah, there's somebody someday is going to invent a better sleep mask. But I, that was my dream was to get that binaural effect while sleeping and earbuds. They just, it's hard. I get it. I hear what you're saying. So. 
Yeah, but it works. And I remember it does, yeah. um, a few, like last month or so, um, doing one, of, one, of, one meditation that you, that you put out, which was like, uh, I don't remember, the name was fantastic. It was something about jumping to, to a different timeline. Ah, quantum jumping into vibrational timelines in the new earth. That's a, I, I love that. Yeah. That's a very exciting and one of my favorite meditations. It really outlines the process that I've come to use as quantum jumping. Uh, it's based upon old Toltec wisdoms and reality transurfing. There's this idea that we have, we're constantly creating realities, and our reality is a combination of a whole bunch of beliefs from your childhood, who you are. Imagine them all like little strings. And they all kind of come together behind us in this space where that's kind of still wave which is an assemblage point. The uh, Vadim Zeeland's exploring an energy cord that forms from the back of the head, which Neville Goddard says where God is lodged asleep, um, that connects to this assemblage point. And so through breathing techniques, you kind of fall back through the assemblage point into a new reality. Um, and so that, that meditation is exciting. I tried to to you jump through to a, to a re reality where there's good health, good wealth, uh, find love, and then kind of combining those together. Um, but I think, uh, you know, even if you take that and, and apply it outside of it, that's kind of uh, a really starting point to understand how to mechanically jump through these realities. And so I'm still exploring with it, but I'm excited about that meditation. It was the first where I combined all these different breathing techniques together. Yeah, I think... For me personally, many times when I'm doing uh, these these exercises, mm -hmm. um, visualization is very is very important for me. It's a, a, a very good piece uh, of, right. the, of the a, a very good tool for me. So I try to like imagine myself in in this new reality, and and sometimes I even feel like like uh, like I jump inside the the new body. Yeah, like I imagine myself going in there. Yeah. That is a common thing I've heard. People feeling like they're jumping almost like out-of-body experience, astrally traveling from their body to another body, and they're in it. And it's an exciting thing. It really is. Yeah. yeah. When I did the, the meditation we were talking about just now, when I did yeah. that one, I, I, I saw myself like getting into a new body. And tell me a little bit more. It's going to happen now. You're going to have a big change. It's going to Now you did that. So what was that? Yeah. Um, no, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about this, this, um, this, this, this energy point right. in the head. I want to understand it more because I remember you mentioned it in the, in the right. meditation and I didn't know about it. So I was trying to... So there's two sources that you can find more background information about this. The first is a Tufti the Priestess, a book by Vadim Zeeland, where it's discuss discussing that we have this thing called the plate or plat. I don't know the correct pronunciation. I always hear different. Uh, it's like a phantom limb connected to the back of our head, like we have a cord that's been plugged in. We don't really feel it in the back of our head. There is a Bindu chakra that's mentioned in yoga um, that is one of the more important chakras. Joe Dispenza will activate this portion in the back of the head, but Vadim Zeeland goes further, and, and, it, and it treats it kind of like the metaphor is like, a, like it's a camera roll. Like they load up a new camera roll, and then that's your new reality, right? So you create a script, and you upload the script for your new reality in this in the in the plat. You don't feel it in the back of your head. You usually feel it in your lower back somewhere. A lot of times when people start doing it, they'll have a sudden sensation in their shoulder blades somewhere in the back. You might even randomly start getting this. But the thing is, we've always, according to Zudim Zealand, we've always had this plat but it's grown lethargic and, and, and it doesn't do anything. The plat is important because it connects to the assemblage point. The assemblage point is all the realities that kind of define our reality. Where the, the, this country that you live in, your girlfriend, all the things that they're, they're kind of pulled into a tiny little bundle and there's an opening right there. We have a, a according to Carlos Castaneda, that's where the idea of the assemblage point is. The old Toltec shamans, would define how to change dimensions by moving this assemblage point. The assemblage point means that you've moved to another, and that, and it's like a physical way of 
moving through into another timeline. So uh, in, in, in Carlos Castaneda's work, in Theun Mare's work, they talk about this assemblage point. And so Vadim Zeeland takes it to the next step and adds the, the idea that there's an energy cord connecting to this. End. So it starts to make sense. There's this passageway and we upload the script. Um, then I started exploring breathing techniques because what's happening is we want, when we quantum jump, uh, it's, it's, an, it's a, a burst of energy. When you look on the small quantum scale, a quantum particle will jump. It doesn't just slide. So what, what I'm doing in that is trying to increase your energy with breathing and then pulling the energy to the head because I think it's an energetic transfer and then falling back through the assemblage point and then you wake up in the new reality. So I don't know if it's true. If you go back to my earlier interviews on my channel, I was asking every single person that came on, what do you think about the plat? Do you experience this plater plat? Is there an energy cord? And I've talked about 20, 25 people and sometimes there's a different answer. Uh, but uh, it, so it's, I think it's unique for everybody, but there is something to it. And once you start activating it and exercising, you start feeling it. You do feel it. A lot of people will say, I do feel it. So it's a crazy thing. Now, what does that mean? What are the deep implications of that? Are we, are we actually on some starship plugged in to some virtual chamber? And then, and this is what we think our reality is, but that's why there's a plat. <laughs> I don't know, but um, that's certainly something that came to mind when I started thinking about it. Why would we have this imaginary energy cord in the back of our head? It sounds crazier than, than aliens in Venus from 3 billion years ago. <laughs> so, Yeah. And it reminds me of, of the matrix. And it does point. remind me that was definitely a thought that I had or avatar when they plug into the avatar, right? Reminds How was me that, of that. that system? I don't remember in avatar. In the movie avatar, he plugs in, he gets in a chamber and he plugs in and he wakes up in the body of an alien and they, it's all from a plug in the back of his head, oh, simply. which they both have in matrix in that. Right. And so he wakes up in this alien body and he's able to do all the stuff in the alien body. Perhaps our higher selves are just plugging us. Maybe there's multiple versions of ourselves and each of us are plugged into some portion of the matrix where we're exploring all this. Who knows? We will probably never know, but it's a way to game or hack the system. And the only thing I can tell you is don't take my word for it. This is all stuff that I'm learning like a chef cooking in the kitchen and I want you to eat the food. I don't necessarily want to talk to you about the menu, try it yourself. Go and read those books. Experiment with it. You may find that this stuff has a magnificent effect because I've had things happen in my life I would never have had happen. It seemed completely unbelievable in a crazy way when I started experimenting with this. So, Could you share a story? Um, just massive increases in um, doing it. Tr I had a job where I just couldn't stand it. It was very time consuming. Um, and so I wanted, I want another source of income that um, completely it, it will replace the other one. So I don't have to worry about this job. And within two months I had like a completely brand new income that was three times more than what I was doing before. And, it, and it had um, nothing, I would never have known what had happened. Was, so um, there was that I've had changes in my body. I've noticed the uh, I've noticed a bunch of different things. I've, I've, I've you know, bought a car, got a new house, uh, you know, in, improved my love life. I've used it for so many different things. Um, the biggest thing I've noticed, there's a, I think we have a higher self that the more I talk about what happens, the less these things happen. It's almost like there's a little protection. Like if I start going into details about all this crazy stuff, there's a part of me that's always afraid. And that's why you'll see on the podcast, you don't see me going into details about my manifestation experiences in detail a lot because I don't want to jinx it. A lot of my manifestations are ongoing. And that's what a lot of people don't understand is you manifest something. It's an experience, a, a variety of different events happening over a flow of time, not just one, one moment in time. And so a lot of times it seems as soon as I say, Hey, I jumped and I did this stuff and it's crazy stuff, then it stops. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of learned to, 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 to not talk about it too much. Uh, but I, but I absolutely can tell you to try it yourself and you'll start to see things. 
And we always have those things in our life that we say that that would never happen. It seems impossible. There's no way I would love to have that happen, but that seems ridiculous. And then I start having it happen. Um, the most uh, crazy of, of events that you can imagine that are coming from a movie that I'm experiencing and going, wow, I can't believe this is actually happening to me right now. That kind of thing. Mm. And how, how could it be? Maybe we could make a, uh, um, uh, a meditation or an, an audio of some kind mm -hmm. um, that, that, that was uh, aimed directly at the subconscious beliefs. So like something like I am breaking my subconscious beliefs right now or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that would allow us to, to, to be more uh, expansive in our uh, acceptance of, of what could happen. That, that could help like, yeah. the time. I try to integrate that a little bit, but I probably need to do it more. Um, but ultimately, if you're having, if people are having a, a hard time, the subconscious is protecting you. Uh, that we're we're in a battle of with our higher self and subconscious if we have a desire because it doesn't want us to go insane um you don't want to wake up next to a girl that you've never met and she's your wife you don't want to make wake up in a completely different body or maybe you do but if you want a miracle that crazy because i've had uh for instance i talk about my book where i would run across a lot and then when i had this crazy thing happen there's a building on this lot And it didn't just go up. It's an old building. So it was not there before. Okay. And so in the old days, if when I have something crazy like that happen, I'd be like, hey, everybody, you got to hear this story. Oh, my God, it's the craziest thing. I saw this building and it showed up out of nowhere. And then it was like, oh, then it's like I'm slowly pulled back to the other reality where that building uh, or everything. Um, so what I, now if I see that building that wasn't there before, I'm like, okay, that means I've just I've shifted, but I'm going to keep it to myself. Um, right, like a synchronicity. It's something that right. doesn't need to... And then after that, my higher better. self goes, oh, well, we can do that now. We can make these little shit, because some of these realities are pretty crazy jumps, but uh, uh, we don't want him to go insane because our whole mission will be destroyed. So, oh, he was okay with that building. Well, maybe we can, we can push the envelope a little bit. We don't, you know, so open yourself. You know, I've tried to say that I'm open to to expansive experiences in multidimensionally on a regular basis. Uh, and I, it's, it's weird. I, I, I do notice it more. My, my observation, I'm starting to notice that, okay, I, I never um, had that, owned that object. I never had that lamp. Um, the, I never bought those pencils, but they, they're here. Okay, that's cool. Or there's a, some little shift or change. Um, maybe they're not, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going with the flow. And I take weird things in the past that would cause me to, Um, question my sanity and use them as signs that things are going my way mm. so and many times um, some of the changes that could ha that can happen uh, our our ego perhaps or our our rational mind will right. be like no that that's not for my good that's like for right. example I, I've had uh, in, in, in recently I've had uh, things disappear you know things that like right. Some, sometimes maybe you will think, oh, where did I, I misplaced this. I don't remember right. where I left it. But I, I've had things like, not, not to get into the details, but... Right, they, they end up in some way, so you know, you know you didn't put it there, right? Right. That yeah. is the ultimate example of the reality shift. We see it happen a lot of times. People just, just think, oh, I must have put it there. You lose your keys. And there's no way that your keys were on that desk. You were never in that room, but now the keys show up on that desk. Um, so it's interesting. Losing objects is interesting. I notice uh, sometimes it seems like I will lose, my, my higher self will have me lose objects just so I can learn how to find them. Because there's a learning process that goes along whenever you lose an object. And then I imagine holding that object in my hand and feeling it in my hand. And then next thing you know, I'm, I'm, I find the object. So there is a learning process when I lose objects as well. I absolutely start noticing when you lose objects or where they shift or where they, that is uh, one of the first signals of when you have these shifts. Mm, that's good. Uh, I'm going to try that one. Uh, recently, I, I, I misplaced the, the, the mask 
for, for going outside. Right, right, right. Because, I mean, it's not mandatory here, but in some places, like in the in the supermarket, they, they ask you to They want you to wear it. it, right. Yeah. And the other day, I just lost it, and, and I started using something else. And, mm -hmm. and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. So, yeah, imagine it on your face, mm. the feeling of it on your face. And within a very good period of time, you'll either have one that makes that feeling or the, the same mask, 100%. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I have a very particular wallet that has a certain skin to it. Mm -hmm. So when I lose, I, of course, everybody lose their wallet, right? Or even when they're walking around the house, where'd I put it? So then uh, when I have that, those really crazy moments, like, okay, I've been looking for the, my wallet for a little while. I will feel it in my hand. I'll feel it in my hand. And then very shortly, I will have that in my hand, feeling that feeling. So, yeah. Mm, that's great. <laughs> I'm going to try imagining myself in the supermarket buying stuff with the, with the mask, the mask on. on, right? Yeah, that, that was a surprise for me when, when I went to the supermarket and, and I was just walking and they said, no, you can't come in. You need to, to wear the, the mask. Oh, I don't yeah. have one. Oh, no, then you can't come in. So they, they sold me one right there. Right. And I, I don't know how, how it is. Um, well, I was just mentioning that sometimes we might think we've jumped into realities that aren't for our for our yeah. highest good, you know. And 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 this this situation, this global situation that's going on, one might think, well, why and how did we, um, right. uh, in in general, um, collectively create this this circumstance, uh, which for many people seems like very horrible or very yes. uncomfortable. And then at the same time, I look at it and, and you can start seeing the, the silver linings and the, the right. how, how much people are starting to go inwards, uh, people who, who maybe never would have uh, thought about yeah. it. Absolutely. What the, I, 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 everybody's going to have a choice with what's happening right now. You can fall into the, the rabbit hole of despair very easily. That's what everybody's telling us to be, is feeling despair. And so if we know that we create reality, that we're moving and shifting to realities based on what we think, all those people are going to be living in despairing realities. All these people that are talking about vaccines and deaths and all these things, all those things are going to come true. All those conspiracy theories that everybody wants to talk about will come true and they'll see the worst of it because that's all they're focusing on and talking about. So all of it is true in whatever reality you create. If you understand that you create your reality, uh, then all the outside information is not as important. We are now in a really crazy time and it, and it feels like on a daily basis, you're gonna, make, you're gonna be given these decisions, how you treat this. If you look at this as have something with silver lining and, and people start to see a, a change, the world becomes better. There's changes in the in the in the world governments and governments and society and the way people relate to each other, the way that people are going within. The world is going to be a great place for me because I'm choosing that reality. I'm moving into a reality where the world is a great place and getting better. A lot of people are going to be moving into a reality where it's a dictatorship, totalitarian, evil society, and everybody's out to get them because all they do is read the news and that's what they're getting. So the more you focus on your fears, the more you're going to see them. So this time of all times, it feels like uh, a, a time of crystallization. You have a choice. You've been given this terrible thing that's happened and you can choose on a daily basis how you respond and, and people are going to go toward this negative lifeline and people are going to go towards a really powerful one where the world has changed and great things start to happen. That's the one I choose. A lot of people don't know they're creating the reality. They're only living in their fears. And those people are going to go directly into a fearful world because they've created it. And in my experience, we're also starting to, to remember who we are, thanks to stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And what I mean is we're starting to remember that we are not the body. We are not the mind. We are whatever is experiencing through those uh, that yeah. those tools or those um those those uh, senses and um right. since we we are who we are is more than our bodies is animating our body and living in it and it's our consciousness so 
it's very much possible that since everybody is doing the same thing, every, mm -hmm. every higher self is experiencing life through a particular body. Jumping to another one, I mean, from the perspective of a higher self, it's very simple. It's just focusing its attention to, to the yes. new reality. But of course, it needs to have a, a, a material, in a way, a material uh, manifestation as well, because it's not just the higher self going to the new place. It's also the, the body, the physical body, mm, like another copy, in a way, of the body is receiving right. most of the, of the energy or the, the main uh, attention or focus, right? Right. I, I don't know if we know for sure. Perhaps we're switching consciousness with the other or we're taking over the consciousness in that lifeline. One of those two things happen. Or a third, which is proposed by reality transurfing, is that other reality doesn't physically exist but it's an information field where it's existing. And then once we, in, we, once we encompass it, then it starts to, to crystallize and become matter and reality from that point. So it's still our body, but it's, we're choosing a reality and then it starts to crystallize from the space of variations. Mm -hmm. Any one of those three are possible. Right, like the wave and the particle. So right. the body we are, or the, the life we are experiencing now, is the particle manifestation it's the particle of the, manifestation of the potential that is around us. right mm. and we're most of us are always in the particle state but if we start to move into the realm of the wave that's when we can change that's when all possibilities become available to us mm. that is uh, i was taking notes because it, it just reminds me i've always been uh, exploring this idea or not always sorry but i've recently been exploring the idea of of us having like two, uh, two selves in a way. So mm -hmm. we have this, uh, this uh, I think it's called sometimes the transactional self, which is the ones that are speaking right now here on, on the material right. plane. And then we have the, um, the transcendental self in a way. Right. And that would be this particle wave duality of, of the human. Well, the really interesting perspective of the higher self is from the law of one, where they talk about everybody has all these multiple incarnations sometimes multiple incarnations at the same time like there may be two versions of you in the world right now but ultimately there's a point in the six and a half density which is a billion years in the future because each level of density has longer and longer period of time as you evolve and develop moving closer to expanding toward god individually but there's a point at six and a half density where the higher self turns around and is has access to all of its previous incarnations and is available and guides you and protects you and is there for you all the time according to the law of one you can ask the, the higher self questions it will answer it will not violate your free will and usually will not contact you directly but it's waiting it's usually maybe making adjustments and taking care of you because it remembers what happened it knows everything that's going to happen to you so it's already experienced all of your lifeline so that's why this higher self becomes, once you start jumping into parallel realities, the higher self starts, you realize that that is a guiding force and it's a part of what's going on. But the higher self knows all the realities. It knows all the realities. You may not. So the, by accessing and what I've started to do is just try to have conversations with my higher self. Uh, meditation, I'll say. What do I need to do to expand my, my YouTube channel? What do I need to do to make a better episode? What do I need to do to improve my relationship? And then my higher self will happily answer. My higher self is desperately wanting to answer questions, but it cannot just voluntarily give me information because maybe that's not what I want. It knows what I kind of want, but it doesn't want to violate my free will and tell me don't go down the street because they'll have a car accident. It, it, it'll tell me if I ask. If that, does that make, that's what the law of one information indicates. I have an episode on that. Um, so yeah, it, it, that, but the transactional self, there could be multiple aspects of ourself. It's very interesting to consider. Mm. And do you think it could be, it would be funny to, to, to run into, into another copy of, of the right. body? Do you think it would be possible in, the, in this same earth? I do. Well, Seth, if you I have some episodes on Seth, another channel being, claims that some people have 
hundreds of different manifestations at the same time. Well, maybe that might be somebody that's trying to speed up their process of evolution because we all go through this process of each incarnation learning these lessons. So maybe somebody comes along and they want to speed that up so they will experience multiple lives. But that's a great question. That's a great question. Maybe your girlfriend is you. Um, may, maybe, maybe it's more than we think. Maybe it's millions of people. Maybe we are God, as Neville Goddard said, and that there's versions of ourself. And, and maybe there's only 144 of us on the planet maybe uh, maybe it's just branched out and, and and then um i look at everybody as if they're myself anyway because um that perspective changes everything absolutely yeah i think so uh it's i mean just if, if we think even even for a scientific minds if you think about it uh we are all the big bang uh 13 billion years later so yeah we are, we are all that one uh than one all encompassing yeah something we are all nothingness. we all came from the beginning and we um if you read the seth information about god that there's all these aspects of himself that strive to become individual and become their own and so he finally had to to release a portion of himself and there was this explosion the explosion is is the is the point in which god says okay all of these versions of itself want to experience in, in, intelligence in a different way. And that includes the planets, the suns, they're all living. They're all just versions of God that are living out their own. This version over here has, has its own. So we're an expression that came from that point in time. I'm, a, I'm fascinated by the Big Bang also. I have a meditation, the Big Bang meditation, which is one of my favorites, where you travel back in time and you you uh, send your intention to the Big Bang so that the universe works for 13 and a half billion years on your intention, the energy of it. So I've done that. I've, I've astrally tried to explore and go to the Big Bang. And I believe you can. I, I believe a lot of times that's where the consolidated power of the life power of the universe. And you can send your in intentions through the Big Bang so that right now we're living out something that we started back at the very beginning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the, and and it makes us think of the 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 arrow of time and going, changing the the present changes the past. Right. Yeah, we, we're I think we're in a in a time of of incredible expansion for for humanity. I'm 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 thinking about it as as a kind of mystic revival. Like everybody's now much more interested in meditation and yoga, mm -hmm. um, astrology, tarot, and etc so many many other uh, energy healings and and people are becoming aware of 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 how limited our our previous conception of of ourselves our previous definition was yeah so I, i'm really expectant for the future i've always I, I started to feel like that all along we've been essentially somebody that's walking around blindfolded where they can barely see just a little bit uh, we only ac access the energy around us through our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our nose, our, our tactile sensation. Uh, but perhaps we will evolve to a different body that, that has 10 senses or 20 senses because there's multiple energies all around us all the time. When we smell, we're just sensing an energy. All we are doing is just accessing energies with this body. And it, and it, and it feels like we're expanding to a point where we're going to our awareness will change. We will start accessing a larger level of consciousness that we're moving to a point. God is just training us. It want, God wants us to be like him, but it's a slow process. So first we're going to get used to these five senses, and then we're going to have another body that's going to be, you know, tens, and maybe it'll eventually, um, who knows? I'm, I'm so fascinated by it, and I can certainly talk about it forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so can I. Um, just a, 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 a small extra idea. Somebody... Somebody mentioned, it's similar to what you were saying about us being blindfolded, that we are gods with amnesia. Exactly, mm -hmm. we are. Mm -hmm. but, but clearly, if we are gods with amnesia, we did this on purpose for some particular reason, perhaps to expand ourselves in a way that we couldn't before. This process we are choosing, and ultimately we will come out of it massively expanded from what we were before at least that's my theory of it mm. but i don't know we we chose to do this <laughs> yeah who knows if there is an 
an end to this process. It, it might be something that's on the, on the one hand cyclical and then also how, how could we ever reach God when God is... is I, I had an interview with Jim... Yeah, I had an interview with Jim McCarty the other day that had a really cool portion where he said, so we will all expand and eventually we will become planets and then we will become suns and then transform to a black hole. And then on the other side uh, will be a white dwarf star and we'll be able to create our own solar system and universe. Mm. And we're being trained to do that by learning an aspect of the creator. And then we will express the creator just like our sun. The solar system is kind of a playground for this sun and it's in, you know, exploring the aspects of the creator and eventually as we expand and that's what we're going through is this training session to become gods of our own universe at some point in time well which was it'll be fun uh, what kind of alien species will you develop on 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 in your solar system <laughs> right yeah yeah totally and and perhaps at that point we will become all the living souls in that solar system individualized and then becoming something going on and on and it's further expansion and just it just keeps on going or maybe we're just a tiny little cell in a larger body could also be that yeah very fractal definitely yeah well brian this conversation has been very mind opening very enlightening and super fun to 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 share some time with you i appreciate very much you having been uh having uh, taken the, the time to, to be here. Uh, if there's any, any closing remarks that you would like to, to share. No, but thank you for having me on, Rafa. It's, it's, it's an honor and I really appreciate you talking with, with me about this stuff and thank you. Yeah, sure. And please go ahead and share with, with, uh, with everybody the, the social links or any, anything, anywhere that they can find you. Uh, they can, uh, my website's The Reality Revolution. Uh, the YouTube channel is Brian Scott. Uh, I'm on Instagram, the underscore reality underscore revolution. Uh, Twitter is at Media Prime. And so you'll find me in one of those places and come in and to one of our chats on our videos on YouTube. It's, it's, a, it's a real family atmosphere. We've started a tribe of people that uh, pr imagine for each other and share their experiences. And it's, it's a genuine organic feeling of a, a family that's forming around this. And we're all sharing our own information. And I invite anybody that's listening, please join me and t let me know if there's something that you want to explore. I am constantly trying to expand my knowledge and maybe you can share knowledge with me that we can explore as well. Hmm. Well, uh, thank you again. Uh, if you want, we can close with the, with the closing phrase that you always use. Welcome to the reality revolution. <laughs> thank you.